Hi, my name is Kevin Hill. I am known as Kevin3NF on a variety of forums around the internet as well as Twitter. And today I am going to show you how easy it is to install and configure the Ola scripts from ola.halengren.com. This is a free set of scripts that you use for maintaining your databases. And when I'm talking about maintaining, I mean the backups, integrity checks or check DBs, and index maintenance, reorganization, rebuilds. All right, it's a uh, they're a free set of scripts, and they're supported by Ola himself, by the SQL Server community at large, and by uh, various forums you can post on, such as DBA Stack Exchange. Uh, there's not paid support for these. It's not a, it's a free product. The support is, is free, but not guaranteed to be as responsive as a, as a third-party vendor. Um, they're, uh, they're a step above the SQL Server maintenance plans, which have gotten better, but are still somewhat limited. and in my opinion, they're as good as most of the third-party products out there. So uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Kevin3NF. You can send me an email if you need to about uh, just about anything SQL Server related, Kevin at DallasDBAs.com, or go to my website, and I've got some uh, interesting things on the blog for new and accidental DBAs, as well as other videos in this channel. All right, that's enough of that. What we're going to start with today is I'm going to do a clean installation of SQL Server 2016 Developer Edition. Uh, reason for that is I want to see I want you to see this start to finish how fast you can do this and how easy it is on a clean install that you know I haven't messed with to make it look any different than it actually is um, because a lot of people when they're talking about third-party products that they didn't write or scripts they didn't write they're oh I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time um, doing this and learning that so I'm just doing a very very basic developer edition install Read the license agreements, please. Uh, with no features other than the database engine, you don't need anything special on here. There's my database engine. Default directories are fine for what I'm doing. I'm going to do a named instance here because, as we can see in the configuration manager, I already have a default instance. That's my 2014. And I already have a 2016 named instance that I do actual client work on. So I'm putting a new one in there also so I don't mess up anything I've got working on one of the other ones, such as my Azure blob storage backups that I'm playing with. I'm going to call this one Ola, so it's really obvious which one it is. And oh, by the way, you have to, your named instances have to start with a, with a uh, alpha character. You can't start them with a number. Learned that the hard way in front of a bunch of people one time. I'm going to set the agent to automatic startup because for this demo, we're going to need it. This checkbox doesn't matter for this purpose, but I always check it because it's a great habit. And I'm going to add myself as a current user. The rest of these tabs I don't care because the defaults will work just fine for what I'm doing. Windows authentication mode is fine for this. Uh, I'm going to delete this instance right after I get a successful recording here. So moving on. And we'll hit install. And I'll, I'll dig a little bit more into what I was saying. The uh, the SQL Server maintenance plans back in SQL 7 and 2000 were horrible. They were just absolutely horrible. If they worked, they didn't have any features. Um, they were for the most basic of all installations. And as such, many of the DBAs out there, when you say maintenance plan to them, they get this look on their face like, you know, you threaten to shoot them. Um, and they'll tell you, no, don't use maintenance plans. At least use Ola, if you, you know, if not something else. Do something else. Ola is the free option to be to have a very, very richly featured product without paying anything extra for it. And it's absolutely going to be a better option than you writing your own code to maintain these and then having to troubleshoot that code. Um, the other bad side, downside of maintenance plans, because it's the underlying framework is SQL Server Integration Services, it's really hard to move the same thing from server to server to server. You're going to wind up just doing them manually because it's annoying. This The scripts here is actually just one script that you can tweak the configuration a little bit and then deploy it to the to servers across the board, especially if your drive paths all match. All right, we're a little over four minutes into this recording and my installation is already done. Let's pop back over here to the configuration management and we'll see this, we'll hit refresh and we will see my Ola instance for the database engine and my agent both installed and running. Done with that. All right. On my backups drive, I've got nothing there. In my SQL Server, Ola instance, with any luck, nothing but system databases here. Perfect. It's exactly what I wanted from previous efforts. I had left some stuff behind last time. So this is a nice, clean install. Go to the downloads. Delete that so you'll see that I'm actually pulling it down 
correctly. Management Studio. I'm going to go ahead and connect to this instance just because why not. All right. I have an instance. It's running. It has no databases. It has only the one default job about you know policy-based management, and that's it. There's nothing here. So let's go over to Google, and if you come even close to spelling this right, you'll get to Ola Hellengren. Go there. Obviously, you can go directly to the <laughs> to the proper link which is ola.hellengren.com. When you go there, you have seen, you know, you've got a whole bunch of stuff on here and if you, you know, you can go through and you can get completely lost in this. This maintenance in this one script right here is backups, integrity checks, and index optimization all in one script. Click that, it's downloaded. You can see it's in my downloads directory right there. 514, 514, that's the one I just pulled. Bookmark this page, and then because when you have a backup question, here's all the parameters and things you can choose. Same thing with the other functions. Bookmark this page. It is your main reference. You will want it later, I promise. All right, so we're going to go over here. We're going to go to Downloads, Maintenance Solution.SQL. And this is the entire thing in one. Ola loves you and wants you to have happy SQL servers. That's why he wrote all this code for you. It's been in development a very long time. It's on thousands and thousands and thousands of servers around the world by hundreds and hundreds of DBAs. Uh, this is really good stuff. All right. Your mileage may vary. Your policies may vary. I don't put things other than Microsoft stuff in the master database. And by Microsoft stuff, I mean what the products ship with. I don't create user objects there. I put them in some other database. In this case, I'm going to call it DB admin. And then I'm going to quit going so fast that I type over stuff. I need to create that database first. That's about the only thing you have to do manually here. DB admin, cross your fingers that this works. All right, there it is. You, just, you saw it pop up. It has no tables in it. It has no store procedures because it just got started and I still have no jobs. So I haven't run any of this script at all. Down here, this is your choices that you get to make to do your own configuration. Create jobs, why yes, please do. Backup directory, where are they going to go? On this system of mine, I've got a really, really fast uh, NVMe Samsung drive on my D drive. It is my D drive. It's this one right here. In the backups directory, nothing exists at this time. No subfolders, no nothing. Cleanup time. I'm randomly picking 72 hours because three days sounds like a fun thing. Output file directory, you can specify one here. Obviously, it would need to be, since it's character-based, it would have to be in single quotes. I like to have mine, I don't specify one because I want it to go into the default SQL error log with all my other error logs. I like all my logs in one place so I don't have to guess where they are. That's me. You can do what you want. And I want it to log these commands to a table. That table is going to be created right here in that DB admin database that I said to use there. That's it. You're done. Run the script. Bang. Refresh this. Now you have the command log table that this is referencing. Refresh the stored procedures. You have the four stored procedures that do your backups, your integrity checks, optimizations, and this is what this is make, makes all these others happen. Go down here and refresh your jobs, and you have backup system, backup differential, full and log for the users. D run your check DBs on system and user. And optimize your indexes some cleanup activity, and that default job that it came with. You're done, and we are nine minutes into this video, and we have a functioning solution here. Just for fun, and cross your fingers, because this failed last time I tried this, we're going to restore some AdventureWorks databases, just so we'll have more than one thing to test these on. We're at the testing point now. So, um, ha, right. I love it when something works like it's supposed to. We'll refresh, and I have two new databases in addition to my DB admin. Just for fun, not what I meant to do. Let's start this job, run a full backup of the user databases. That's already done. And this backups folder previously had nothing in it. Now it's got an instance directory, and then it's got, let's just make it bigger for you, it's got a directory for each of the databases. This is the data warehouse adventure works. We ran a full, there's a full folder. There's my file, and it's a lot bigger than I want it to be because, and I did that in intentionally, I promise, 
I did not set this brand new installation to compress the backups. The reason I didn't do that is I wanted to show you how to do it yourself. If I want my folds to be compressed, and you would want to do this for all of the backups, I would assume. Go into the, the in, actual step, and I'm like, okay, I see all these different parameters. There's the 72, it's a full backup, it's all the databases. I don't see where compressed is no, or anything about compression. Back to my reference materials, which is the OLA website. SQL Server Backup. Find the word compress, because it's really that easy. All right, the compress parameter is Y or N. If it's null, it uses whatever your instance is set at, which in my case was set to not compressed. So I'm going to do compress equals Y in my job step here. And yes, this is how you, you tweak yours. It doesn't matter where you put it. I'm just going to put it here in the middle. At compress equals single quote Y, single quote, comma to separate the parameters. Hit OK, hit OK, minimize that. Rerun the job, start. It ought to go very, very quickly. Yep, back to the directory. There's the new one, and it compressed it. That's it. Whatever parameters you want, however much you need to tweak this for your environment, they're going to be here. I mean, you can get into buffer counts and block sizes and, and number of files to stripe across multiple devices. You can go very, very deep on this. And that's just the backups. You've got your integrity checks. You've got uh, index maintenance, and let's run that job just for fun and look at some of the output that goes into that error log directory, which is something I uh, just decided to do, so cross your fingers that it works properly. All right, index optimize. There's a bunch of logic behind this one. So we're just going to run with what it comes with out of the box, and it's going to hit all the databases. Nope, it's going to hit just the user databases. All right, so it did its thing. If I go to, go to view the history on it, we can do that just like any other job. And we'll see this stuff. Very hard to read. Great. Let's go to the error log directory. That makes things much easier. SQL Server, OLA, MSSQL, log. Yes, I do. I'm the admin. And there's the log. Index optimize. Ran at 520. It's 520 now. Again, looks like a whole bunch of text. This is just all the parameters and stuff that you ran it with. Great. AdventureWorks had no work to do. AdventureWorks DW 2012, there was some work to do. It ran a index rebuild here. A rebuild, 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 because that's what it needed to do. And DB Admin didn't need anything. The whole thing was done in that block of text right there. Now, you can set parameters. Go look them up again in your, your new favorite reference material. You can go in here and you can look at fragmentation levels and set these these two parameters here. You could set a minimum like 5%, you know, below 5% you leave it alone or X number of pages. You can tweak this to your heart's content and there'll be lots and lots of people out there that'll sh help you figure out how to do this. There's even some examples down here at the bottom, almost like a Microsoft article. Fantastic stuff. We've been I've been talking to you now for just under 14 minutes and we have installed SQL Server put the scripts on it, tweaked a couple, and run them successfully. I guarantee if I ran all the other backup jobs, they'd be just fine. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments on the video or ask them on the, with the SQL help hashtag on Twitter. Go ahead and follow me. I love it when people follow me. It makes me feel important. Uh, if you like the video, please share this. This is a great tool that every DBA should at least know exists. Even if you can't use it, maybe you do drop it into your dev environments instead of blowing a license on a non-production system for some third-party product. Uh, I hope you got something out of this. I look forward to hearing back from you, whether you did or you didn't. Have a great day.